Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast, a coffee lover's guide to good vibes, books, rom-coms, and everything in between. Now grab some coffee and let's get chatting. It's a big season because a lot happened last season. We have mm-hmm. a few characters leaving, but now you get yes. to join this fun <laughs> cast. I would love for you to like start off with telling us about May Sue and kind of describe her because we know a little bit, very little from like these teasers. Mm-hmm. Can you go a little mm-hmm. more in depth? Yeah, for sure. So May is a very tenacious, courageous, warm individual. She likes animals. As you can see, she likes horses, especially. And uh, she's not without flaws. She definitely has some flaws, but she's she's a really good p- person inside. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So you have the connection with the horses, with Nathan. And then I, I talked to Kevin. He said, everyone always has like a backstory. So I'm sure that yes. will be revealed throughout the episodes, do you have like, can you tell us where May has come from? Like what town she's coming from? Yeah, so she's from Chicago originally and uh, she comes to Hope Valley and it's a work-related like kind of arrival. And uh, her, yeah, she's just like strolling into town on that very fast brown quarter horse and causes uh, Nathan to do a double take. And that's where we start the, the series. Yes, I love that. It's so exciting. I especially, you know, all the Team Nathan fans. I'm hoping your arrival gives them <laughs> some hope to watch this season because I think <laughs> it's a smart choice by the writers bringing you in rather mm. than teaming up, teaming him up with someone else that's been there. It's like, okay, yeah. you know what? Just clean slate, and here you are. So it's like a great opportunity for you. Well, I saw some of the edits that have been made about Hallmark Happenings and it's, did you have Kevin on recently and he said something about The Bachelor? Is that why the edits were all popping up yesterday? Oh, I bet that's what that was. Yeah. That he said something. It was like <laughs> The Bachelor, like which rose is he going to give out? So. Yeah. Who do you think? I mean, there, there are three very eligible bachelorettes in town. If not, also, there's also um, Johanna who plays Molly. She's also an eligible bachelor, bachelorette and also some eligible bachelorette eligible bachelors. I don't know why I'm slurring so much right now. (laughs) Eligible is a weird word. So (laughs) yeah, yeah, Yeah. no worries. That's okay. So we know a little bit about your character. I'm sure we're going to like get tons more information once it premieres in just a couple of weeks, but I would love to hear about your audition because it seems like you're from Canada and one calls the heart loves to employ Canadian actors. (laughs) So can you like talk about kind of working with Hallmark because you have in the past a little bit but like what was this process like okay so it's been wonderful I've worked with them a handful of times already I did mystery 101 bottled with love I did raise a glass to love recently and now there's also when calls the heart so everyone in town I would say that's a Vancouver actor knows what when calls the heart it's a great show to be on and it's no secret everyone knows and I would wager that everyone probably wants to be on the show and so um it was just like such an exciting experience I never thought that I would be a part of it because you never really see a lot of Asian people in period pieces and so I never really grew growing up saw myself in that time period and sometimes also not in North American media so much and so when the breakdown came through so I got an email and it just had a description of the character and some of the audition sides I was just so elated that there would be an Asian character let alone like a female Asian character that I could potentially play so I auditioned for it and then I had a call back and uh, there were certain things that they were asking for like some special skills and uh, one of them being riding a horse And it's just so serendipitous because I learned how to ride a horse when I was in Mongolia in 2016. And so it kind of just like came into fruition, this random skill I learned while like horseback riding on the steps kind of came into play for this. And I was actually filming Raise a Glass to Love with Laura Osnes at the time. And the horses that are on that show are actually on One Calls the Heart too. So they were actually in Kelowna where we were filming and I just had to do a horse test and I got on a horse, did a couple of rounds and yeah, trotting, galloping and things like that. And Oh, wow. That's so cool. So this like fun, like little adventure in Mongolia, who knew it would help you like get this like huge role. That's such a cool yeah. thing. Yeah. I thought yeah, that was meant to be. Did you I have think like so. a feeling maybe in the audition room, like, or maybe even the callbacks or was everything virtual at this point? 
Yeah. So during COVID, all almost everything became virtual. So I got the the email, and then I did a film a self tape. So we just filmed it ourselves, and then sent it in. And then I got another revision of the sides and some notes, and then I did a different version. And I, I don't know. I, I I felt really, I felt really. I guess I had a really good feeling about this this tape just because I really like the period, and I have always just felt like an old soul myself and so being in character kind of felt really natural to me and yeah I was just really excited got some notes back um and then immediately I got a call from the director Peter Deluis and from John Tinker the showrunner and they were so welcoming and they even John Tinker even asked me if there's anything that I would potentially want to like showcase or what kind of like other talents Peter was asking what other talents I had do you can you dance like what about like traditional dancing and I was like I am open to learning how to traditionally dance but yeah it was it was really really nice and I, I still feel so lucky that it's me in the end of the day yes absolutely I mean I, I bet a lot of people were really hoping for this and then you got this I mean congratulations that's amazing thank you thank you Okay, so I want to know, like, if you were a fan of When Calls the Heart before even getting the audition, I mean, I, you were aware of it, obviously, but mm -hmm, did you mm -hmm. watch it? And if you didn't, that is totally fine. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. I, yeah, I've seen for sure. I've seen the, the show. And uh, it's just something that's so easy to watch. And it just feels so good. And like, you know, sometimes I'll have it on while I'm cooking to like reruns of episodes and things like that. And I was like, just I'll just stop while, while I'm cooking and I'll like, I'll watch and I'll even get like misty eyed over scenes that aren't even really that sad. But it, there's something about this huge, this wonderful loving community that everyone I think really gravitates towards because just like the popularity with friends, I think One Calls a Heart is similar in the sense that it really replicates what human beings really want, which is a community and one that supports you and one that sees you as you are, flaws and all, and accepts you. So I think that that's something that's really nice about One Calls a Heart and makes it a easy to rewatch re over and over again. It really does. And there's so much stuff that happens. So if you rewatch it, you'll like probably catch stuff you'd never caught before. Uh, did you like, I just saw this, but did you maybe prep for production by watching a bunch of episodes, even like probably the more recent seasons would be more helpful because the first couple yeah. seasons seemed like a lifetime ago and the show's for changed sure. so much, but did you like kind of study up? <laughs> Yeah, I, I felt like I, I really had to because I think also I wanted to fit in the world in a world that was like so established already. And I think that my acting style typically is just, you know, just like be natural and stuff. But there's a, there is a very specific style, too. And and I really wanted to fit the style and uh, just feel like as soon as I get on the set that I'm a part of the world and a part of what has already been established. So I, I did do some studying and, and of course I felt like a little bit imposter syndrome -y when I when I walk on set and there's so many people that have been so established in this huge community that is like so, so nice and welcoming, but you know, they've all been working with each other for so long. I, felt a little bit um, nervous, but everyone was really nice and welcomed me with open arms. Oh, that's so great to hear. Everyone seems to be the nicest on that show. I tell you mm -hmm. what. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess you even kind of mentioned this being like a, being a period piece, like it's not that far back, but it kind of right. is. And like the tone and style of the show, even just a little bit and how they talk is different than modern times. Just even just like, maybe it's kind of melodic just a little bit. If you watch them, it's a little bit more proper. Did you kind for of sure. have to tap into that a little bit more? Yeah, for sure. I think that, um, in real life, I'm like pretty animated and I talk a lot with my hands and things like that. And, um, I am like very excitable, but there is just like kind of like a more like Zen, it's a more Zen kind of like way of interacting. And the language is so specific that if you, there's a lot of colloquialisms that we use in present day that we don't, that they didn't use back then. And you know what's super ironic about it um, or just interesting. So this season nine is taking place in 1919. My great grandmother just celebrated her 101st birthday in September and she was born in 1920. So it, it just seems like so, such an interesting thing that potentially, not that I, not that in season 10, I would be pregnant, but who knows what the storyline is going to be. But 
it could have potentially been my daughter who is my great grandmother, which is such a weird thing to wrap my head around. It really is. It's like, and it doesn't seem like it is that long ago, hundred years approximately, but you know, am I great grandmother, uh, she wrote a list out of all the inventions that happened during her lifetime. Wow. And like everyone had horses and buggies, like when she was a yeah. kid and then to see like what that all like became, it's just fascinating. This is like the time period of the show is like right when things were getting going. It's just so crazy. For sure. My grandmother told me about the time that she remembers um, taking a plane for the first time. And that was when she was young. And she said she specifically remembers opening the windows and throwing out her apple cores. And I was like, that seems ultra dangerous to me, grandma. But that, but like how far we've come since then. Oh, that would be like, I, I hope those windows stay sealed nowadays. That's just not the little yeah. windy inside Can you the imagine plane. sitting and then there's like an apple core just falling down from the sky. Yeah, crazy. That is nuts. Well, that's so cool. Happy birthday to your grandma. That's so exciting. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. So I guess let's rewind a little bit. So your first day on set, I guess production usually starts with like July. Can you mm -hmm. describe like walking onto the set for the first time? I know you said you're a little nervous, but like, what was it just like for you? Like you're in your attire, you see the set all like done up. What was that experience like? You know, honestly, it was so, it was just jaw dropping for me. I remember seeing it for the first time and it's just, it, it feels like you're going to Disneyland or something. Everything is like so picturesque and beautiful. And that day it was so sunny and the sun was starting to set and it was just like so lovely. And I remember my first day on set was a short day and it was a group scene too. So everyone was together. Actually, you saw it in the promo. That was um, when everyone was together in the, I don't know what has been released about it. So I don't, I don't know if it's been announced what we're doing there, but it's the group scene where we're all standing in um, outside of the mercantile. Do you know what that is? Is it, okay, I saw something. Is there like a pharmacy that they're opening and they're like celebrating the opening of the pharmacy? Is that the thing or is it something else? <laughs> it was um, the, who, like the mayoral election. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that was the big, like last uh, episode of season eight, they kind of alluded yeah. to that getting going. So I guess that will continue on in season nine. <laughs> okay, so we're all together for that. And um, that was my first day on set. And it was the first time I got to meet everyone together. And Erin had sent me a lovely email before and and she was like very nice about everything. And, and walking on set immediately, Ben Rosenbaum is like, just so friendly. Hi, my name is Ben. I remember he was the first person who introduced himself. And then all the other castmates like came so like shortly after from, from all the corners of the, of the, of the square. And they're just so nice. And Peter Deluise was just, you know, so gentle and guiding me through this whole process. And I remember just feeling so lucky because sometimes you forget in this maze of auditioning and, and feeling rejected and all these different things, like what a blessing it is to show up and, and work with these amazing people in this picturesque environment when the sun is setting. And you know what I mean? It was just such a surreal experience for me. And because I had a background in journalism and I was working in journalism for so long, it, I never imagined my life to look this way. And I always, I always try to like be mindful and remember how grateful I am for that. Yes, that's such a great message because like, you know, as actors, like just so many auditions, not hearing anything back and then you finally get something just like massive. That's like, wow, what a, it's kind of like a reward for all the hard work you put in and then you switching careers like, wow, this is huge. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I guess oh, I was going to say, I think it's such a great deal for you, like for the first scene that you film to get to be surrounded by everybody and yeah. maybe like not feel like the pressure, like totally oh, focuses on me. I get to kind of just yeah. sit back and observe this world. Yeah, me. yeah. It was a much lower pressure scene. And um, Johanna was next to me, plays Molly. And I remember when we we're rehearsing, I was kind of nervous and I was standing by myself. And then she comes up next to me and she is dressed to the nines. This woman dresses so beautifully, so impeccably. She's so stylish. And uh, I was just in awe. I was like, girl, you were you were dressed so, so well. And she's like, well, when else am I going to dress like this? And I was like, that is such a good message. And it's true, like with COVID and things, we're all stuck at home and we kind of like live in our, our sweats and things like that. And and she just kind of like reminded me, like, if you're not gonna like wear your wear your nice clothes to the grocery store, 
And I'm like, yeah, that is great. I, I will do that now. So I'm like trying to break out my nice clothes when I go grocery shopping or for a walk or something. And yeah, it's nice. Yeah, you might as well, because like you said, this thing's going on forever and we are all super comfy and it's nice mm -hmm. to dress up a little bit. I bet even for you doing these like interviews, get to get a little extra fixed up than you maybe normally would. I have not, I don't, I was like anticipating this interview all morning, even yesterday. And I was like practicing to do my makeup. It's been, I feel like I'm out of practice and it's been so long since, you know, we've gotten dolled up and, and ready and I don't even own any hairspray anymore. Things like that. It's like, we don't even know where the stuff is. It's, it's a weird time. And, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I will like literally put all my hair back, put a face mask on and like just wear that around all day. Cause I'm like, why wear makeup? You can just make your skin look better wearing a face mask. Wow. You know, I didn't think about that, but that's a good point. Cause then like, why only wear night creams at night? Why, why not wear them in the day and then have it really restore? That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, if you're not going anywhere, you might as well like, give your skin the hydration it needs. <laughs> life lessons right here with Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. I had no idea we were talking about skincare, but I am all for it. It's, I mean, I could go on all day about that. It's just so interesting, but we're mm -hmm. getting off topic right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I tend to do that. I'm sorry. We were talking about, okay. Hope Valley. I love being off topic though. It's so fun. Like you never know where <laughs> the conversation is going to lead. Okay. So I guess, well, we have to talk about, like we mentioned Nathan Grant, the love interest, but what did you meet Kevin McGarry before filming started? Did you kind of get to know him a little bit? So I think you guys saw in the promo, the scene where I'm walking down the stairs. So that was the, that was like five minutes after I met him for the first time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'd never met Kevin and uh, it was my first time working with him and he is as wonderful as everyone says. He's so funny. He's so charming. He's so talented. And it was so easy to work with him because he's just like, just so generous and so genuine. And yeah, it was, it was lovely. And the chemistry was so easy too, because he's just such a talented individual. Yeah. He, he's a funny guy. And I bet like the chemistry just from these previews is like, whoa, it's amazing. <laughs> and he has the mustache. He's a new man. He has new love interests, lots of stuff going on. Do you like the mustache? I actually do. I don't mind it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> do you? I like it too, actually, because that was how I met him for the first time. And it grew on me. Definitely. I, I felt like it was so suave and just like, so like manly. <laughs> yeah. It's so different from like, kind of like the innocent, sweet Nathan of previous seasons, clean shaven, young boyish look. Now he's like, I'm a man. Yeah. I have a mustache. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I like the mustache I guess a lot. So. I guess that's what that symbolizes. I don't know, but that's how I do <laughs> mustaches. So is that like the plural of mustache, mustache, mustaches, Must I guess that's an odd yeah, word. <laughs> I think it's mustaches. <laughs> but I wonder what he thought about the mustache. I he liked it a lot. That was. I'm going to tell you like that. <laughs> yeah. He wanted to keep it. Oh, and he probably like had the little comb they have. He could be combing it in between takes. <laughs> yeah. You with some of these <laughs> oh gosh yeah I, I've actually seen a few of those around and you're like the I, like Salvador Dali little mustache yeah, I little wish they'd done dress. that people <laughs> would have been like whoa what's going on over there <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay so do you have like a, I know you can't give us specifics but is there maybe a scene that you filmed with him that was just super fun oh there's so many funny scenes and these aren't giving it away there's and there's one time there's a scene where Nathan and I are walking together, but we're kind of in the background and you, you just see us and you can't hear what we're saying. <laughs> and, and Kevin, he's so funny. He, we're walking and we're just, you know, miming so that we don't cover someone else's audio. <laughs> he goes, dare me to say poo. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I dare you to say poo. And he goes, poo. And then we just cracked up and we just were walking and we're like real laughing as we go because he just said poo. And it's such a really like small thing but it was so hilarious for the time oh my gosh yeah that that is so funny I could just like envision that I hope so. I wish someone could have gotten like a little b-roll of that like that would go viral yeah I wonder if I can find it like if if it comes out I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep my eye open to see whether or not that team made it but uh yeah I'll let you know if it does Oh, what a funny guy. That is, that is so funny. I love that. Okay. Well, um, I wonder, is there like, gosh, we have 12 episodes. So we have 12 episodes. Is there maybe a favorite episode of these? Is it, is it your entrance into Hope Valley? Is there something else that you're like, you really just like love making that episode? 
Okay, I would say episode one for me was a huge one and I really, really enjoyed that one. And I would also say, I think probably, I think, I don't want to give anything away, but I would say like halfway into the season, something really exciting happens to me. And yeah, I, I would say that that was one of my, my favorite ones as well. So I have a question. Have you done like other series, like where you're a series regular before? Just Mystery 101. So that was my first recurring role. And uh, I own a cafe in there and I'm Jill Wagner's best friend. And uh, yeah, worked with Chris Palaha, who's really, really nice too. And Jill as well. Okay. So I, I love that. I mean, that's such a great uh, show, another great opportunity, but I was guessing, is this like the first experience you've had where you kind of have to really keep things under wraps? Like you can't <laughs> spill the beans and what is like that kind of like a weird, like feeling for you? Yeah, you know, it, it, it was because here's the thing. I, I didn't know how I was going to be announced by Hallmark Channel and I didn't know if it was just going to be surprised. I'm, I'm in the first episode or how it was going to go down. And I remember I was it was Christmas or the day after or something. It was just, it was like after dinner. I remember it was specifically, it was after dinner. My family was around me and I was just scrolling through Instagram. And then suddenly I started to get, I got like an influx of followers and I was just kind of confused by why that was. And I was tagged in something and it was the promo and I didn't even know it was released. And it was, no one mentioned my name in it. So I was like, how did they find me? How did they find me? So that was a really, really interesting thing. And, and these days I'm like trying to keep up with what has come out so I can know what to say and what not to say. But uh, that's, that's been an interesting task because I, I have no idea. And if you bluffed me, I probably would fall for it if you said you knew something that you didn't, which is bad. Don't use that against me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like I should know more. Some of these people post stuff online. I'm like, how did you find that out? I don't know where they're getting their information. I know. I know some of these photos and like clips. And I was like, I I'm, I'm the same way. And I'm like searching for them and things too. Oh, yeah, you never know. It. The people have their sources somehow. And they're like, doing their little investigations, but. Oh, uh, Hardys yeah. are detectives. I would say. Yeah. There's like an Instagram account called the Hardy detective. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah so I guess they're somehow finding this information out I don't know if it's IMVB or what is but I bet that's a fun experience for you kind of like just this anticipation of each episode coming out and like okay now this is out and I can talk about it yeah for sure and I I kind of knew what I was getting myself into before um while I was filming everyone was kind of prepping me. They're like, Hardys are the most amazing fan group. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just so great and all these different things. And Peter DeLuise is like, you might want to take some photos to potentially post when the episode airs and things. So I, I've kind of like curated a lot of like content that, that I'm excited to share once, like, you know, once the ball starts rolling, there are things that I'm like, I've been like holding on to and I'm like, can't wait to post it. And, and yeah, or see, muted again. Um, I was to say that's so cool. You should make like a scrapbook or something, and like have like a and like by episode, you can have this whole like lovely scrapbook collection, so you can remember this awesome experience on the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing, because the episodes are filmed um, like two at a time, so sometimes we're filming um, like for example, parts of two during parts of one on like on the same day or something. So you kind of ha you kind of have to like kind of map it out in your mind, like how everything goes and what order it's in and like whether or not you said something or didn't say something or how you were feeling beforehand or something like that so it's like so a scrapbook would have been perfect at this time you should have suggested this like six months ago <laughs> if only I had known that you were going to be a part of it I would have said hey don't forget you need to get all your photos and your documentation <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly well, I yeah. guess you could just go sift through and try to figure out the order of things. That's so interesting though. Like a mm -hmm. fun acting exercise for you to be like, okay, where am I in this moment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like the only way that I was able to keep, keep it all kind of in, in like an organized fashion is I have like sticky tabs and I have pages of like notes and on different things. And then I keep the front page of my script so that I can use it as a reference for all the different, you know, scripts that come, come later. And remember what I said when. 
Yeah, you have to, to keep track of it all. That's so cool. Well, what a fun, what a fun experience. So mm-hmm. I guess, did you get like a nice big trailer and did you hang out with any other, other cast in between things in their trailers? Cause I know I, I've heard that as a thing they do. They have like little jam sessions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paul definitely had them a lot last season and the seasons before. Uh, well with COVID, it was a little bit tougher to hang out as often, but, um, I got to hang out a lot with, I would say, we didn't work too, too often, but I, I got to, I, I think at work, sorry, I'm stuttering a lot <laughs> at work and outside of work. I feel like the people I hung out with the most were Ben, Andrea and um, Viv, Natasha. So the Canfields and um, Faith and my Kickham. I think those are the, the ones I have, I've hung out with the most. And it's, it's been so nice. And we, we chat always while we're eating. We sometimes like with Viv and Natasha, they've welcomed me and their little family. And we've had like lunches and dinners together. It's been very sweet. That's awesome. Well, that's so great that you made some great connections and hopefully the the season will continue into season 10, the season, the show will continue into season 10 and you'll get to hang out more with these people and hopefully COVID restrictions will be lessened at that time. And you can like really like have fun, fun in between Mm -hmm. hangout sessions. Yeah. Yeah. And give each other hugs. Yes. Oh yeah. That would be nice. I forgot what those were like. <laughs> <laughs> Same. So funny because when I started working, I felt like I hadn't spoken to another human being in so long that my mouth was like, almost like, like inexperienced. And my, my, my mind was working at like a five minute delayed space. Yeah. This is doing stuff to us, but you just got to stay strong, push through it. It'll be over someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. We're referring now back to season eight, as I'm sure you were made aware of the love triangle and this massive like response around the outcome. Were you like aware at the point of like getting the role, like kind of what part you would play in the craziness of all that? Uh, I had a clue, but I wasn't super in the know. And um, what happens with One Falls the Heart is there's a kind of like an idea of where the storyline is going, but it sometimes like changes as we go. So I think that the character of May could have evolved in a different direction as we were going along. So it could have gone in a completely different way. And, and, you know, maybe if there was no kind of chemistry between Nathan and I, maybe it would have gone in like, you know, or if there was, it could just go in multiple, multiple different directions. And that's kind of how like the organic nature of the show is. Um, but yeah, I definitely was made aware of the love triangle and all, all that. And I was like, oh, there's no triangle here and divide the fans, you know, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how it goes and how fans receive everything. Cause you know, even the actors, we don't really know how the final product looks. We have like hints of it, based on ADR and things, but like editing does make a huge difference in how the rest of the story goes. Yes, absolutely. I kind of like that they do it like organically though. That way it like, it flows maybe with the environment and how things are working. It probably makes for an even better show that way. It's not as rigid. It's more like flexible. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the nice thing about the organic nature of it is that like when I started I was able to offer suggestions of things that maybe I would like to try or, or something like that, and they could potentially tweak it into making it go that way. So I think that's nice. Oh, that's awesome that they're like receptive like that. I love that. Uh, mm-hmm. And you made me think of something. Oh my gosh. You said it a second ago and I was like, I've got to ask your question. And now I don't remember what it was. <laughs> okay. Give me a second. It was, it was like a good question too. Oh man. Well, maybe it'll come back. Okay. We're talking you know about what? organic nature. It changes hmm. the triangle. Oh, oh, the triangle. Was that it? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? If it comes back, that'll be fine. If not, I don't know. Maybe someday. Uh, it's so weird. I hate when I do that. You're like, man, <laughs> I, I should have written thing. it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess before we kind of talk about, you know, your, your journey as an actress, Is there something you're really, oh, I know it just came back. (laughs) Yay. Okay. In mid other question. That is so weird. I was going to ask you, are you going to have like a watch party for the first episode? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Um, So this might be a little controversial, but my mom doesn't know that I'm on the show yet. Really? (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Aww. So, um, but my brothers know and my cousins know and my friends know. And so we're going to do a watch party and I'm going to let my mom know so at some point in the series and maybe have a couple of episodes like backed up and to show her at once. And I think it'd be, be nice. And I hope she, she likes it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So she'll like be watching it and be like, wait, wait a second. Is that you, yeah. Amanda? <laughs> yeah. So Aww. the because the thing is, my mom has known me as a journalist for so long, and I I was doing that while I was in school, and it was a kind of a thing. And my mom really wanted me to go in that direction because it was something that I'd been doing for so long. And so when I came home and I started to act, I was a little bit um, just quiet about it. I I didn't want I didn't tell her too too much just because. I think she'd seen me as a journalist for most, well, just like a lot of my adult life. So um, and she really wanted me to go back to Hong Kong and I didn't want to tell her that I wasn't coming, going back and things. Um, so I didn't really tell her. And even now I've, I've kind of like been, been pretty quiet about what I've done. And she's seen my commercials, but hasn't clued in that it's me because she doesn't see me in that light. It's, it's very bizarre. Um, but she's starting to catch on now because I think her friends are telling her or family members are showing her things. And so um, I think it'll be a nice reveal to show her some of my episodes on One Calls the Heart. Oh my goodness. He, that's well, obviously I think when she sees her, she's going to be like, okay, I think my daughter is onto something. And I think people <laughs> believe in her talent because mm-hmm. this, is, this is like just the biggest opportunity. I mean, that's amazing. Even though you studied the others, but I'm sure you're going to take skills from what you learned and find ways to apply oh, yeah. it to this. As, as will you. I, I think that that's something that really enriched my acting life that I never really thought about because, you know, you kind of like lived a, a breadth of other experiences in your life. And that kind of just helps you inform your characters when, when you get the auditions for other things. Absolutely. And, you know, people who've only acted their whole lives, sometimes I, maybe they're like, not like, I've heard people say, well, I, you know, did all this when I was younger and trying to make ends meet and like do these other jobs and people who maybe just done this acting forever, don't understand the other type of lifestyle. And so it does probably yeah. make you more versatile as far as experiences yeah. go. For sure. And I think one thing is because we've worked in corporate, corporate worlds, it's kind of like, um, it's easy to tap into being a business lady for an audition or something, you know, because we've we've done that life for so long. Absolutely. And I think that with, so what, so when, when I was working in journalism, I was working on the morning show at um, CTV at first, and then I worked at Bloomberg in Asia. So CTV's hours were 5am till 9am is my shift. And then I'd go to school after. 9.30 9.30 till, I don't know, 5.30 or something. And uh, when I worked at Bloomberg, it was, um, I'd start work at about four o'clock and then I'd get off at about 5 p.m., 5 a, 4 a.m. to 5 p.m. So I would wake up every day at around three o'clock and get to work and for four o'clock. And, and I just remember the, just waking up every morning at three and feeling so tired from the day before but then for acting for some so for some reason I'm still waking up at three o'clock sometimes and I just like feel so invigorated and so alive and and just I don't know it's like kind of like you're like you've got to like a, a, a like I don't know how I con con the world into thinking that I can do this but here I am that's how I feel Oh, that's amazing. And I love that you didn't like have like these, the formal training, like some of these people go to like these schools and years of education. You don't have to do that to be in this industry. I think it's like Mm -hmm. nice to hear someone who's kind of just gone at it, maybe a different avenue. Uh, So like, where did you get inspired to like, is this something you always wanted to do, but you pursued this other career, but is the, or did this kind of just happen in the middle of getting your education? So it's actually quite odd because I think that my first love was science um, growing up and writing, actually, I would say writing first and then science. I thought I was going to be a stem cell researcher or marine biologist, something like that. I, um, I'm so proud of this. I was asked to join the science Olympics when I was in high school. Like that's how science heavy I was in school. And, and um, my school also had a really good choral program. So I really wanted to get in the choral program. And when you're in the choral program, if you get into the chamber choir, you have to do 7 a.m. until 8.30 a.m. And then you go to school and then and then you're automatically in the concert choir, which is from three o'clock until 4.30. So if you were in the choir at all, then you weren't allowed to be in the play or any sports because then you'd miss too much school. So I never really thought about acting at that time because I was just so into choir and 
and um, in choir, we got to travel and we went to various places in the States to do the Festival of Gold and all these different fun experiences. And then I just thought I would automatically go into sciences or into business school. And uh, my first semester in sciences was painful, so painful. <laughs> it was so, so painful. And I was like, okay, we're redirecting. We're definitely doing a 180 from there. And um, then I did my degree in communications. And while I was doing that, I got, a, I was um, second in the country to, or like a runner up in the country to do the Peter Zawski internship with the CBC. So I had this like opportunity, yeah. And then I didn't get it two years in a row, but then I just so happened to meet just serendipitously the, the, the news director of CTV. And then I got an internship and then I got a job after with them. And then I was working with them while in school. And then I went into grad school and then immediately like even during school, I got the job at Bloomberg and I started working there right after. So I, I never actually thought about acting because it just seemed so out of reach to me. I didn't know any actors. I didn't come from a particularly artistic family. My brother's a graphic designer and that's the extent of artistry in my family. And um, I did this for fun YouTube video and it got sent to an agency and then got representation like that. And then I went full force into acting classes and just did that. <laughs> That's crazy. Were you trying to juggle? Cause I can imagine with the schedule you're saying, were you able to juggle that? Or did you just decide, you know what, if I'm going to pursue this, I can't do this job at the same time. Well, there's absolutely no way I could, I could juggle it. It was three, it was like 4am until 5pm. And then by the time I got home and then I made dinner, I went to sleep at 7:30, So there was like no time. And, um, I actually thought I was gonna go back to Bloomberg and I told them I'd come back in six months. I just wanted to travel the world and they gave me their blessing and they're, they're excited for me. Yeah, they're very nice. And then, um, then I came back to Vancouver while I was, and I packed up my bags, made that YouTube video and I was still traveling and I got a gig in Vancouver. So I came back, did that. And then I was gonna travel again, but then I started to slowly get like a stream of of opportunities that just kept me in Vancouver and um, my boss at Bloomberg was like are you coming back and I was like not yet <laughs> and I think now they've kind of gotten the, the point that I'm probably not coming back for a while but it was weird because my identity for so long was being a journalist and it, it was so hard for me to see myself as an actor or an artist when I'd been so pragmatic and like numbers focused for so much of my life. And I actually didn't really identify as being an artist or an actor for so long. And I always maintained that I was a journalist because that's what I studied and that's what I did for so long. And actually right before COVID, I had an opportunity with National Geographic and I was like, this is everything coming, like coming together. This is, it was an, it was an opportunity I offered my agent, but it was a journalism opportunity and it was science-based and I got to travel. I was like, this is everything I've ever wanted. And then, it, and then it fell through after COVID happens and, and things, and that's what happens with life. But it was just such a, it was such a crazy experience. And, and then short, it was not shortly after, but like a couple of years later, I, I got one calls to heart. And I feel like if I had done that Nat Geo show, maybe I wouldn't have been in town or around to do the one, one calls to heart. And that's been kind of the, the pinnacle of my career so far. Yes. Everything happens for a reason. These like opportunities that don't happen, then this comes along. It's just crazy. It's like also right place at right time. Like if you were on that, you probably, like you said, wouldn't have done this and I would not be talking to you right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very, crazy. very grateful for that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What a like an amazing story. I just think, I hope this inspires people who maybe are like following one path and they're unsure if that's what they really want to do to just, you know, life short, take a chance and pursue something that inspires you and makes you happy. <laughs> that's how I feel too, because I think that one of the things I'm, I'm, I, I feel very blessed about is I, I feel quite confident. And I know that if I, if I were to go back to journalism, I could do that one day because you know, like I, I, I just have, I have confidence that if, if I were going to do that, I could, but maybe this opportunity in acting won't come back to me. So I, I, yeah, I just felt like I, 
would be so happy to pursue a career in journalism, but I just wanted to see what would happen here as well. Yes, absolutely. And, then, and you know, you need to be younger. I feel like at least not like 50. Just, I mean, although, although there are actors who are in their 50s who are having tons of success, but I think it's nice while you're younger to see, can I, can I make this happen? And then just, yeah. this is like the trajectory of your life scene where it will lead. Mm -hmm. So this is awesome. But you know what, though, for all the people who are listening who are in their 50s and like can now devote that time, maybe their kids are out of the home and stuff and they and they want to pursue this thing that they've always wanted. There's so many opportunities. And in and like, I, I guess, like for as many people as there are in the world, Viola Davis is like there are that many stories to tell and everyone is perfect for some story, like absolutely perfect for some story. And a lot of people are, are receiving so much success joining it later in life, like you and I. Yes, absolutely. Oh, this is so great. I'm just so glad you shared all that. It's so fascinating. Well, congratulations mm -hmm. on all of your success, thank you, thank on you. all of your different career things you're doing with everything. It's like, you were definitely, I mean, my gosh, you were just rocking it in the journalism world. Now you're rocking oh. it in the acting world. So congratulations. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Of course. Okay. So before we do a rapid fire session, I want to know if you have any other projects in the works that you could tell us about. Um, well, uh, nothing that's currently in the works that I can talk about in terms of film and TV, but um, in my personal life, as I had said before, I really like writing. So I'm just working on some writing myself in my spare time. That's cool. Is it like, is it novels or is it scripts or? Yeah, novels that? and also oh, some wow. script ideas. I'm like, <sighs> Sometimes I just like to, to dream up like, you know, Hallmark movies or rom-coms myself and I'll just like put that to, to pen to paper and stuff and just for fun. And yeah, see what you happens. might as well. There's a lot of actors that are doing that now with Hallmark, especially or GAC family. It's amazing. Like, and they're relatively like they're early thirties. I mean, to be now writing and producing stuff. Uh, yeah, definitely yeah. pursue that. And plus they need as many scripts as they can get. There are so many movies that need to be made. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think Pascal and Cavan did one. Yeah. I think Andrew's working on writing too. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh my gosh, these multi-talented, all of y'all, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> well, I guess now rapid fire, I'm going to add a couple extras to these now that I like kind of just after learning your journey, I want to know, is there an actor that really inspires you? Ooh, there's so many. There's so many that really inspire me. I think Viola Davis is one that's really great. I like Tony Leung if we're going to do an Asian actor. I think he's amazing. Um, I think that I really, really admire Will Smith's work ethic. I love Marion Cotillard. She's a French actress. And I love watching her act. If I'm talking rom-coms, I really like watching Matthew McConaughey. And I love watching uh, just so many different people. I really like I just, I just, yeah, I just love consuming media <laughs> is the, the easiest way to say it. Yes. I, all amazing actors. Um, I heard you quote Viola Davis earlier too, so I'm not surprised you mentioned her. And then of course, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey, well, he's amazing. So now is there like a movie that you could rewatch over and over? Oh, there's so many movies I rewatch over and over again. I, at least once a year, I'll do Forrest Gump. I watch Burlesque like once a month. I, like I watch that so frequently. How to, uh, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, I watch a lot. I watch a lot of rom-coms. Um, right behind you, I was watching Cinderella's Story before we were on this interview. I just love watching feel-good movies. Um, yeah, I, I, there's a lot, of, there are a lot of movies I, I rewatch over and over again. <laughs> Oh yes. There's like so many great movies. And then Jennifer Coolidge and the Cinderella story. She is just like, <laughs> she's so funny. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then what is the last TV show that you binge watched? Arcane. I really liked Arcane. Have you seen it? No, I actually haven't even heard of that. What is this? Okay. So it's animated. It's on Netflix. It's um, based on the characters from League of Legends. And it's, I would say it's succinct storytelling. It's very well written and it's really well produced. The animations are great. And yeah, it's, it's a limited series. So it's not as long as the other ones, but it's, it's lovely. Okay. You know what? Did it just recently come out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I kind of feel like I saw something about this and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I don't have Netflix. So I've, I've got to get Netflix to watch that. <laughs> okay, cool. I love that. And then um, I have something else and it went away. Cause I didn't write this one down. Hmm. <laughs> See, I just so many it's thoughts okay. going in and out. It's like, what was that? <sighs> okay. Hold on. It'll come back. It'll come back during my next question. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like last saying. time. Perfect. Yeah. It's so weird. Okay. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Ferrero Shea. 
Ooh, wow, well, I, whiskey I, I, ice cream. I like that. Yeah, they do. Well, I mean, I think it's like made, someone made it to taste like it, but yeah. um, I really like hazelnuts. I think that's probably mm. why. Yeah. I like the texture. Okay. Of things. Oh, especially like it's Ferrero Shays. Like they have like the creamy with the, t- okay. There's, um, have you heard of Perfect Bars? No, what's that? Okay. Perfect Bars. You can like look them up. They're like, they sell them the natural food stores, but they're like these little refrigerated, like meal replacement protein bars. And they have a hazelnut crisp one. And it's like chocolate yeah. hazelnut crisp. You, it tastes like a Ferrero Rocher. You would love it. It's, <laughs> it's healthy enough, but it, yeah, you should I like the air up. quotes. <laughs> I know it's like, it's pretty high calorie and there's some sugar in it. It's a peanut butter too, but it's kind of healthy. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, life is life is life. You got to exactly. indulge sometimes. <laughs> yes. And I tell myself it's a healthy indulgement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. If we're actually replacing the meal, it's like a, a, another meal, like on top. Exactly. There you go. It's like, you have to be careful if that's your snack, then you just have like extra meal that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But that's fine. Or you can have the whole thing of ice cream too. That's a great meal option. Mm-hmm, uh, put mm-hmm. some pecans on there and then it's healthy. Uh, exactly. so you have your nuts. Okay. So I don't know where that's coming from, but then um, <laughs> you mentioned that you travel the world. I think that's amazing. I've never been anywhere. And I just love hearing about people who've gotten to travel. Where are some of your favorite places that you visited? So I really like warm weather. So I think that Greece is really nice for warm weather. I really like Vietnam because I really, I really enjoy like street food. So you can get street food a lot and it's great. And, um, but I think that culturally, the one that's most different to anything that I've experienced is probably Mongolia. I like spent a week in the, like the, the deserts and stuff and, and like in the countryside. So I was living the nomad life with, within the yurts, like those tents on horseback. We only traveled by a horseback, um, solar panels to like, you know, light up our, our housing. And it was, it was wonderful. It was such a cool experience and eating the way that they eat and like you know drinking and traveling and doing all the different things and traveling by yak cart (laughs) that's nuts that's so cool like Mm -hmm. totally worlds away from Vancouver yeah absolutely probably the most different oh that's so cool what like again like a neat experience to help you like with these acting experiences because how many people can say they traveled by yak (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Now where's a place you would like to visit, but you haven't traveled to? Hmm. Maybe Turkey. Uh, I heard it's have... like, the... oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, I think I heard that they have like, um, a lot of like fusion in that, that place. Cause it's like a, a, a blend of three cultures. So I think that'd be a cool, cool thing to experience. Oh. Yeah, that's interesting. There's a video I saw, like a travel video, and they like have the their houses are like carved into the sides of these mountains, and they have like these tunnels that they walked up. And I just cool. people are still living like that, and I'm like, that's just I don't even think there's like running water or electricity. I just can't imagine. It's just so fascinating. You've got to go there sometimes. They have like yeah, yeah. air balloons that like fly over. I know it's, it's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The land. Where do you want to travel? Oh, gosh, anywhere, everywhere. Uh, well, I guess I would love to go to Scotland because I like uh-huh. Outlander. I don't know if you've seen Outlander, but no. okay. Yeah. Well, that's a big show, but like, I wish I was born in the 1700s. And so I like <laughs> want to go over there and like, look mm-hmm. at all this tassels. That's kind of my thing, but that's mm-hmm. where I, go if I could pick. But... Oh, that's wonderful. That's a great place to go. Yeah. Just to one see of these the tassels. Yeah. Yeah. At one of the interviews asked, um, what's a modern invention that you would miss if you were born in 1919? Mm-hmm. It's um, one of the ones on set that they were asking. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I don't think I'd miss much. And then I asked, I was like, I, I, he's like, she, I, I, I don't remember how the, the, the topic came up, but they're like, well, you want to know what Kevin said? And I was like, sure, let's hear what he said. And he's like, plumbing. And I was like, oh, right. I totally forgot. That would be something I would definitely miss. So your Scottish dreams, 1700s plus plumbing. Let's, let's add that caveat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I, you forget about that nice uh, aspect of modern lifestyle. Did, did they have like plumbing in Mongolia? No. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you kind of experienced what that must be like. That's crazy. Yeah. It was a long drop toilet. So there's a hole that's dug into the ground and you, you kind of like balance on these uneven planks oh and you just gosh. go in the, to- in the uh, long drop. Yeah. 
Wow. It makes you appreciate the things we have. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. Okay. Yeah. Guess what? I remembered the question. It just came to me. Yay. What is your dream role? If you could play any character, <sighs> what would it be? I have so many dream roles. I, I, I actually think about this often. I would want to be a superhero. I'd want to be a princess. Like, you know, those like Hallmark switched for Christmas. <laughs> like I would love to do something like that. Um, I, I think that primarily though, I, I, I feel like, you know, with the, with this career, you get a foray into things that you want to do and kind of get a taste of it. So I would say probably all the careers that I wanted to do that I can't do in this lifetime. Like, um, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a marine biologist. <laughs> I want to, you know, be a lawyer. And so if I could do roles where it gives me a sense or a taste of what it would be like to be those people, I, I would, uh, I would love it. A pilot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then you get to do your research, like for your pre-production, you get to do all this research and like, I know we actors talk to other actors to prep and like dive into character. So you really kind of get to live that life for a little bit. That's mm -hmm, amazing. Mm -hmm. Or like fly the plane, get to fly the plane, hopefully, <laughs> you know? Oh my Things gosh. Like yeah. You have to like go through the training. Okay. Yeah. So you have to have like a long list of things. And if you want to be a superhero, I mean, Vancouver, all the CW shows are like right there. So I'm sure mm -hmm. you may see an opportunity come up sooner rather than later. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking like an hour of your time to chat with me. It was Anytime. great. It was so fun chatting with you and congratulations. Likewise. Thank you so much. And Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all the new episodes. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Have a great day.